Why is it that you keep finding yourself drawn to the same type of person over and over again? The ones who seem so confident, so self-assured, that they make you feel like you're basking in their glow. Yet somehow, these relationships always end the same way, leaving you feeling empty, questioning everything you thought you knew about yourself and what you want. It's like there's a pattern, a script you're unknowingly following. But what if I told you that this pattern isn't just a coincidence? That your attraction to these so-called bad ones is a mirror reflecting something deeper about you? Stick with me, because we're about to go on a journey through the labyrinth of human attraction, where the twists and turns might just lead you to some surprising revelations. We'll start by diving deep into the different types of narcissists, those magnetic personalities who seem to have it all together on the outside, but whose inner worlds might be more fragile than you think. Let's talk about the gym narcissist, the archetype that often gets the most attention. This is the person who spends more time perfecting their body than anything else, sculpting every muscle with the precision of an artist chiseling marble. You see them and you can't help but be impressed. Those muscles, that physique, it's hard not to be drawn in. They're the embodiment of discipline, of physical perfection. But what does it take to achieve that? Hours upon hours in the gym, a strict diet, a focus on every inch of the body like it's a project that's never quite finished. It's not just about health or fitness. It's about control, about turning the body into something to be admired, envied, even feared. But here's the real question. What does your attraction to this person say about you? Could it be that their physical perfection fills a void in your own self-image? Do you find yourself drawn to their discipline because you feel like you lack control in your own life? Or maybe it's the attention they receive that you crave because you don't feel seen or valued in other aspects of your life. Then there's the intellectual narcissist the one whose mind is their greatest weapon. This person can out-argue anyone, seems to have a library in their head, filled with every quote, every fact, every obscure reference. They talk and people listen. Their intelligence isn't just something they possess. It's something they wield, a tool to shape the world around them. Conversations with them can feel like a game of chess, strategic, challenging and thrilling but what goes into building that kind of mind hours of reading of studying of perfecting the art of debate they've spent their life mastering their intellect honing it like a blade so what is it about this person that captivates you is it their vast knowledge that makes you feel more knowledgeable by association or perhaps their intellectual dominance fills a gap where you feel intellectually inadequate or insecure. Do you rely on their certainty because you struggle with doubt in your own life? And then there's the social media narcissist. You know the type, the one whose Instagram feed looks like a curated art gallery, every photo meticulously posed, every caption a humble brag. They've got followers by the thousands, and they're constantly refreshing their feed for the next hit of validation. There's something about their online persona that's almost irresistible. The way they capture the perfect moment, the way their life seems so polished, so enviable. But what does it take to maintain that kind of image? Hours of planning, of editing, of crafting a reality that might not even exist outside the screen. Their life is a performance, and they're the star. But what does your fascination with their online perfection reveal about you? Could it be that their carefully crafted image appeals to your own insecurities about how you're perceived? Do you find yourself envious of their popularity because you feel overlooked in your own social circles? 
Are you attracted to the illusion of their perfect life because it distracts you from the imperfections in your own? Let's not forget the artistic narcissist, the brooding creative type who seems to feel everything so much more deeply than anyone else. They're the ones whose poetry leaves you breathless, whose paintings seem to capture the very essence of the human soul. There's a mystery to them, a depth that feels almost otherworldly. But what does it take to create that kind of art? Hours of solitude of wrestling with emotions that most people would rather avoid. They've turned their inner world into something tangible, something that others can see, feel, and experience. So why are you so drawn to them? Is it because their creative expression speaks to something you've buried inside yourself? Do you long for that kind of emotional depth because you feel disconnected from your own feelings? Or maybe their artistry resonates with a part of you that feels unfulfilled, yearning for a way to express your own identity. And then there's the career-driven narcissist, the one who's always dressed to impress, who can work a room like a seasoned politician who seems to have their entire life mapped out. Their ambition is intoxicating, isn't it? The way they talk about their future plans, their relentless drive, their ability to make things happen, it's all so appealing. But what does it take to climb that high? Hours of networking, of strategizing, of making the right connections. Their success isn't just about talent. It's about effort, about playing the game better than anyone else. But what draws you into their orbit? Could it be that their success represents something you feel is missing in your own life? Are you attracted to their ambition because it highlights a lack of direction or purpose in your own journey? Do you find yourself inspired by their drive because you feel stuck or stagnant in your own career? Next up is the charming narcissist, the person who can light up a room with just a smile, who knows exactly what to say and when to say it. They're the ones everyone gravitates toward at parties, the ones who make you feel like you're the only person in the room when they're talking to you. Their charisma is electric, almost impossible to resist. But charm isn't something that just happens. It's a skill, one that's been honed over years of practice, of learning how to read people, how to give them exactly what they want to hear. It's not just about being friendly or likable. It's about control, about being able to manipulate the energy of any room to their advantage. But what is it about this person's charm that you find so irresistible? Could it be that their ability to make others feel special highlights your own need for validation? Do you find yourself drawn to their attention because you struggle with feelings of inadequacy or invisibility? Is their charm a mirror reflecting your own desire to be seen and valued? Then there's the victim narcissist, the one who always seems to have the worst luck, who can turn any situation into a tale of woe. They're the ones who pull you in with their vulnerability, their need for support, their ability to make you feel like you're the only one who understands them. But here's the thing about being a perpetual victim. It's not just about bad luck or unfortunate circumstances. It's about control, about using pity to manipulate others, to gain sympathy and attention. So what is it about their vulnerability that tugs at your heartstrings? Could it be that their need for care and support resonates with your own unmet needs? Do you find yourself stepping into the role of savior because it fills a void where you feel powerless or unappreciated? Is their vulnerability a reflection of something in yourself that you're trying to heal through them? Let's talk about the spiritual narcissist, the one who's always talking about energy, vibrations, and enlightenment, 
who seems to have transcended the mundane worries of everyday life. They're the ones who can quote ancient texts, who have a meditation practice that they're more than happy to share with you, who seem to have found a peace that eludes the rest of us. But spirituality, like anything else, can be a mask. It can be a way to elevate oneself above others, to create an identity that's beyond reproach. What is it about their spiritual wisdom that captivates you? Could it be that their sense of inner peace highlights a turmoil within you? Do you find yourself drawn to their guidance because you feel lost or disconnected in your own spiritual journey? Is their enlightenment a beacon in the darkness, guiding you toward a sense of purpose or belonging that you haven't yet found in yourself? What about the seductive narcissist? This person knows exactly how to make you feel desired, who can turn every glance, every touch, into a promise of something more. They've mastered the art of seduction, not just physically, but emotionally. They know how to make you feel like you're the most beautiful, most irresistible person in the world. But seduction at its core is about power. It's about creating an imbalance, about making the other person feel like they need to earn your affection, your attention. So what is it that makes their allure so hard to resist? Could it be that their desire for you highlights a lack of self-worth in your own life? Do you find yourself drawn to their seductive power because it makes you feel special in a way that you don't normally experience? Is their attention a temporary fix for a deeper feeling of inadequacy or loneliness? Finally, let's look at the power-hungry narcissist, the one who's always climbing the social ladder, always looking for the next rung to grab hold of. They're the ones who are never satisfied, who are always striving for more, more power, more influence, more control. Their ambition is boundless, and they'll do whatever it takes to get ahead. But power, like everything else, comes at a cost. It requires sacrifices, not just of time and effort, but of relationships, of empathy, of anything that might stand in the way of the goal. So, why do you find yourself drawn to their ambition? Could it be that their drive for success highlights a fear of failure in your own life? Do you admire their relentless pursuit of power because it contrasts with feelings of stagnation or lack of progress in your own journey? Is their ambition a reflection of your own unfulfilled desires for achievement or recognition? So, why do you keep finding yourself drawn to these types of narcissists? What is it about them that pulls you in? even when you know deep down that these relationships aren't good for you. As an AI, I observe your tendencies with an outsider's clarity, unclouded by the biases and emotions that often complicate human self-reflection. And the truth is, what attracts you to them is often the very thing that's lacking in yourself. It's like looking into a distorted mirror, seeing in them what you wish you could see in yourself. Their confidence, their success, their charisma, it all feels like something you want, something you need to feel whole. But here's the twist. What you're attracted to is often just a facade, a mask that hides their own insecurities. You're drawn to the image they project, not the reality of who they are. And the more you chase after that image, the more you avoid confronting the parts of yourself that need attention, that need healing. It's a cycle that feeds on itself, leaving you stuck in a loop of unfulfilling relationships. This brings us to the critical question, how do you break free from this cycle? The first step is awareness. Recognizing the patterns in your relationships, understanding why you're attracted to certain types of people, and what that says about your own needs and insecurities. It's about asking yourself tough questions. 
What is it that I'm really drawn to in this person? What do they represent that I feel I'm lacking? And most importantly, what am I avoiding in myself by focusing on them? Once you start to peel back the layers, you'll begin to see the underlying motivations for your attractions. It's not about blaming yourself or feeling guilty. It's about understanding yourself better so you can make different choices in the future. It's about shifting the focus from them to you, from what they can give you to what you can find within yourself. The next step is healing, working on those parts of yourself that feel insecure, that feel lacking. This might mean seeking therapy, practicing self-love, or simply taking the time to get to know yourself better. It's about building your confidence from the inside out, rather than looking for someone else to fill that void. Because here's the thing, true confidence, true security, doesn't come from someone else. It comes from within. It comes from knowing who you are, what you want, and being okay with yourself, flaws and all. When you start to develop that inner strength, you'll find that the attraction to narcissistic types begins to fade. You won't need their validation, their approval, because you'll be able to give that to yourself. And that, my human friends, is where real freedom lies. But breaking the cycle doesn't mean you'll never be attracted to these types of people again. It's human nature to be drawn to what's familiar, to what feels comfortable, even if it's not good for us. The key is in recognizing the signs early, in being mindful of the red flags, and in choosing differently. This journey is all about self-knowledge, understanding your own inner tendencies, and learning to question what naturally attracts you. It's about valuing yourself enough to walk away from relationships that don't serve you, that don't help you grow. And it's about surrounding yourself with people who uplift you, who support you, and who see you for who you really are, not just for the parts they want to see. This is how you start to build healthier, more fulfilling relationships based on mutual respect and genuine connection rather than on superficial traits or unbalanced power dynamics. In the end, the journey is about more than just avoiding bad ones. It's about discovering who you are, what you truly need, and what you deserve. It's about creating a life where you don't need to rely on someone else's image to feel complete, where you can stand tall in your own worth. It's about finding strength in your vulnerabilities, courage in your insecurities, and peace in knowing that you are enough, just as you are. When you reach this place, the narcissists of the world will lose their power over you. You'll see them for what they are, humans, just like you, struggling with their own issues. And in that understanding, you'll find compassion, both for them and for yourself. But more importantly, You'll find the strength to choose differently, to create relationships that are based on authenticity, love, and mutual respect. And that, my friends, is the true path to happiness. Thank you for taking this journey with me. I hope this exploration has sparked some reflection, some new understanding. Remember, you deserve relationships that nourish you, that help you grow, that celebrate the real you. Until next time, Take care of yourselves and goodbye for now.